this opportunity. I can't, I wouldn't be here with all of you without Terry. Fran, thank you very much for this. And yes, the lights are on. <laughs> yes, you all light up my light tonight for sure. And this is, this is Kate Cod. I mean, you guys are really rocking it tonight. So thank you for being with me. It's so exciting to see all of you. And I just want to say to Jeff Perry, thank you for still being with it and pushing hard each and every day for the public's concerns, the public's safety. He has it in his heart. He had it in his heart every day that he sat with me in the House, championing the issues that the people he represented cared about, and he continues that challenge in pursuing those goals today. So we're very thankful that he's engaged, and we know he will continue that service at another level someday. So thank you. happy to see all of you and I want to just I want to highlight just two people that are here that are very close to me tonight my family is back home in Shrewsbury my my husband Steve who's a wonderful guy you'll meet him along the trail and some of you have already uh, Bobby's 10 and Judy's 8 and they have their own little lives there's a basketball tournament today and a lacrosse you know game and all those sort of things that Steve's hanging out with and he's very happy to do all that but I have a wonderful a young woman in our company tonight that I have known since she was born. I remember holding her in the first days of her life. And her mother is someone that is very near and dear to me, who I met in law school back in 1989. And she is a Falmouth resident, and her, her daughter is just a wonderful, wonderful girl. She is accomplished in her own academics, in her own achievements. But what impresses me most about her is her kindness and her love for her mother, for her brother who is challenged with autism, and just the love of life that she has, and what a wonderful and engaging young woman. And I just want to introduce my goddaughter, Claire Martin. <laughs> Regina Martin, who is an attorney in Falmouth, <laughs> and does so much to help so many that have challenges uh, with their children, and she just brings her heart and soul to her work and to her family. I love you. I love you both. Thank you. Here we are all together tonight, and we have a lot of work to do. I just want to introduce myself to those that may not know me as, as some others. Uh, first of all, let me just start with uh, Shrewsbury. That is my hometown. It's where I uh, was raised myself. It's where I raise our children. Uh, Bobby and Judy attend the same elementary school that I did, but I then went on to another school that's near and dear to my heart in Shrewsbury, and my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Chulo, is here in <laughs> Shrewsbury. <laughs> and all these years later, gosh, I remember being in the classroom, seeing you right there and all those lessons, and I just learned tonight that her husband, John's the one that corrected all my papers, and that's why I'm <laughs> Shrewsbury's home, hometown for me, and Steve and I are blessed with two, two wonderful children, and education is very important to us, and we want our children, like you, to have every opportunity in life. Education is the foundation for an industrious life. We know that as parents, and we want to see every opportunity and reach, whatever that is, a college education like Claire is pursuing, whatever it is, we want that to be in reach for everyone. And I have also been blessed as you, many of you may know, but some may not, my family history started when my great-grandfather, Francesco, and I know there's another Francesco in this room that belongs John, to somebody. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there. <laughs> Francesco Polito, what a beautiful name. A five-foot-two man came over to this country in 1909, pursuing a life for his family, an opportunity to make it better. And he came to this country with a work ethic and a spirit to just work and get ahead. And he started with working at the railroad, and then he started his own business making concrete blocks, 
And eventually that business just grew and grew because of his spirit and his ethic and his work. And it's a family business that we own and operate today, and I'm very proud and honored to be able to do that for my family. But it's a small business, and I understand the pressures and the concerns that small business people have everywhere in this state. Go to bed at night thinking about your next job, you think about the people that work with you, and you think about how you're going to make it all connect at the end of the day. And I've also been blessed to have examples in my life about public service. And I see so many of you here that have served in your local community, that have been able to run for other offices and serve at a higher level. And that's where I started my service as a selectman in Shrewsbury. And I know a little bit about politics in Massachusetts. And like Jeff, I know it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> I was elected five times to the Massachusetts legislature. And, and I know, like Jeff, what works there and what doesn't. When Jeff and I were there, we worked when we had a Republican governor in Mitt Romney. We knew how good that was to really was advance <laughs> causes. It was pretty good because it forced the debate and the, the, the respect and the civility, which is much more of what we need now. But I also ran and had the honor of running statewide. And Jeff had the honor of running for Congress. And I earned a million votes. I raised over $1.3 million. And I love to remind Charlie that I earned more votes than he did. <laughs> I am not faint of heart. And that's what brings us back on this trail, I guess, because I wake up every day doing as a mom would. Our children are young, so I pack that lunch every morning, and I give that lunch box every bit of love that I can. Sometimes it's just a peanut butter jelly, and my son likes fluff, so I put it right in there. And I make it work, because sometimes I don't see them at the end of the day on this campaign trail but I know I gotta just give it all I can. And I pack that lunch and then I go start getting ready for my day and my husband will ask me consistently every single day, are you out of your mind <laughs> getting on this campaign trail? Are you really, why on earth are you doing this? And I gotta tell you, every single day that I get on this campaign trail, I can't tell you how energized I am and I'm energized as are you, because I know that we, Charlie Baker and I, make a formidable team and that we can together make a real difference on Beacon Hill. You we are ready. We are ready on so many levels, and we do say this together, we can make Massachusetts great. And what does that mean? That means that every every town, every city, every school district, anywhere you go in this state, doesn't matter where you live, what your zip code is, every child in this state ought to have the best in education possible. <laughs> education is the language. We need to make that happen everywhere we go. We also talk about jobs, jobs for everyone. Wherever you are, if you want to work and earn a better life for yourself and climb that ladder, you should have that opportunity. And if you can work, if you can work, you should have meaningful opportunity to work and bring yourself out of where you're at, if it's poverty level or someplace else, to get out of that and find a path to have a skill and a job to be self-sufficient and earn your way like my great-grandfather did to a better life. That's what we need to do more of in this state. And then every, and every community, every community, vibrant, safe, and strong. That means you need a state government and state leadership that's just not going to give these promises that are empty and unfulfilling. But when Charlie and I speak about our cities and towns, we'll deliver real help, not false promises. And one of the plans we talk about in this campaign, and we know we can do this, as we grow our state revenues, if we grow them 3, 4, 5 percent, or when we do, we'll do the same thing for your cities and towns because you deserve the best you can to deliver your police, your fire, and your school services wherever you live. So we will do that. And we 
we know this is, this is more than speeches and more than political rhetoric and more than commercials on TV. This is going to take a lot of hard work for us to get Massachusetts back on track and to be great again. It's going to take a lot of work. But it takes leadership to get us there. And when, when I'm out on the campaign trail, which is every single day, we're crisscrossing the state. We're getting to places that we don't normally get to. And we'll go to Springfield and Holyoke and Lawrence and, and Lowell and New Bedford and Fall River. We've been to all of these communities, and I'm so happy to hear, be here with you on the Cape tonight. But we see some places in this state that are really left behind, really left behind. But we also see a lot of people that are working so hard every single day, playing by the rules, earning their way, saving for their future, at their kitchen tables, balancing their checkbooks, trying to do everything right. But we don't see a state government that mirrors the greatness of the people in this state, and we need to do better and raise that bar and aim high and get there. And that's more than lip service, okay? That means leadership. Leadership means competence. It means caring. It means compassion. It means rolling up your sleeves with a sense of urgency. There are some really big problems in this state, really big problems. When you talk about DCF, that a five-year-old boy who was in the care of our state government because he didn't have a mother or a father or a guardian at home to care for him. And our state government was lost. That is unacceptable. When you have a, when you have a health care system that worked in Massachusetts, Jeff didn't vote no, for I didn't it. Vote but for <laughs> I did, I did, I did. <laughs> That's okay, we, we are civil and respect one another. I voted for it. 98% of the people were, are insured in this state, but today, 84,000 plus people are disconnected from insurance because of a federal mandate uh, in this state that doesn't make any sense, and a website that doesn't work is not helping people that are in crisis, that need prescriptions, need health care. It's not working. That's a management issue. And there's so many other areas of state government that just with a little care and a little attention and a little urgency and management skills like Charlie Baker and I have that can fix it and make it work again for you. We just want state government to work again for the people in this state. That's what we need. Jobs for everyone, education that's great everywhere, and communities that are safe and strong and vibrant. How can we go wrong with that? So this is where we're at, folks. We can win, and we will. This is an open seat for state government. So state governor hasn't been open for eight years. If you're satisfied, if you're satisfied with the inertia on Beacon Hill and the status quo of this state, then you settle for something less than you deserve. If you want better, you want to raise that bar and aim high and make it great again, we are your team. We are ready to lead and we are ready to win. We cannot do it without you. That's why I'm so But we need you. I can't stress enough, and Joanne knows this too because you were up there and Jeff as well. We need each and every one of you. And when I said I was really excited to see you tonight, I am. It's March. We're op opening up victory offices this week everywhere in our state. We have people all around our state ready and willing to work. This isn't just a Republican cause. It's an independent, unenrolled Democrat. It's people that want our state to do better and be great again cause. And that's why we're activating everyone in this state, and it starts in places like this. So it's a Saturday night on Cape Cod, you're here, and you're ready right with me, and I need you to do it. So this is what we need to do. Terry's in charge, okay? And we need to make
make sure if there are people that you know that will host an event, a meet and greet like this, or a coffee shop visit, or an office visit, wherever you work, I'm there. Charlie will be there. If there is an opportunity to raise money for this campaign, find who can give and give. I don't care what it is, $5 to 500 the max. We need people to invest in our cause and believe in our team. So whoever it is, we will engage them, okay? And light up your social media like Terry Morgan <laughs> and Rick Sir and Linda and Janet and everyone else. Get the message out there beyond our circles of friends. Use your Facebook, use your Twitter account, and I love Instagram now, so use that too. <laughs> use it. Reach out. And when they say don't talk politics at the dinner table with your family, talk politics at the dinner table with your family. It's that kind of year, folks. And about my running mate, there is no one more qualified than Charlie Baker to be your governor. state budgets. He has managed the safety net to make sure it works for the most vulnerable people in this state. And he knows how to get things done. He's turned around an agency as large as Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare that was in receivership by building a team, holding it accountable, and getting results. I bring the small business point of view. He brings the, the larger business point of view. But we both bring our hearts because we care about people, we care about our country, we care about this commonwealth, we care about our working families, and we care about lifting all boats. That's why we're all here tonight. So please help me, let's walk this together, and let's win, and let's Woo! be great.